Hey, this is Billy from AdultCello.com, and today I want to share with you my top three reasons for tension in the left hand when playing cello and how we can work on them. Just in case you're new to the channel, my name is Billy. I'm a professional cellist who started learning the cello at age 25. Now I'm an online educator and I just specialize in helping other adult learners who are ready to learn this beautiful instrument. So today we're going to dive into my top three reasons for left hand tension uh, I want to be specific about this. There's, you know, <laughs> as adults, we get all types of tension when we're trying to learn new skills. So this isn't going to be connected necessarily to tension you get from trying to vibrate, like do vibrato, and it's not the kind of tension from shifting. This is, what we'll be talking about is, like within a single hand position, playing notes, and also not even talking about extensions. Okay, so that's just like basic closed hand position in you know, any of the lower neck positions really. All right, so reason number one is what I'm gonna call thumb pushing. It's a very, very, probably the most common issue that creates tension with the left hand is, you know, we have our thumb placed behind the neck and then as we start playing notes, the thumb starts pushing into the back of the neck, okay? So I just wanna talk about kind of what's going on there, why we do that. Um, and then how, here's, I'll give a little exercise as to how to kind of work on it. The reason we do it is because if you look at our hands and you look at the way we use our hands in modern day living, we're constantly grabbing things. Our hands are, the, the joints are made to kind of close. It's much easier to close your hand than it is to like spread it wide open. So it's just a natural thing for us to want to do, especially when I think, okay, I got to sink in my finger down into the string to get a good tone my thumb's like, I'll help, here, boom, and it pushes. The problem is that just creates this kind of vice-like action, and so if we need to start switching fingers quickly, it just gets really rigid and stiff and tense. So there's a couple things you can do. The first thing you could try, just for fun, is to just hang your left thumb completely off the back of the neck Try not, when you're doing this exercise, to have it like a, a hitchhiker thumb where it's off the neck but stiff and extended. It's like just went limp, okay? Like someone, those little darts with the, with the poison tip, you know? It's like someone shot your thumb in the perfect spot and now it's just went kind of numb. And you can kind of get a feeling for how to sink weight into the string without engaging the thumb. The other exercise, I'm gonna borrow from uh, one of my vibrato exercises, because it's also great for working on your left thumb, is if you just play any note, I'm gonna play C uh, in first position, second finger. And what I'm gonna do is as I start playing, I'm gonna try to maintain the same pitch, so I don't, I don't want it going all over the place, but I'm just gonna... I'm moving my arm all around. My arm needs, therefore, to kind of feel pretty, pretty light and flexible if I'm moving it all over. But I'm maintaining weight into the finger. It can help you get the sensation for having kind of a, a heavy finger, but not a stiff finger, and not having an arm that's kind of locked into place. Because, okay, squeeze. You know, it's, it's just a heavy finger, but the rest of your arm feels really light. So it's kind of like, a jug and you poured all the liquid into your fingertip and then the rest of the arm is just like a jug without any liquid in it okay so it's much lighter okay that I think really helps get the sensation for how to sink weight in without using the thumb all right issue number two is what I'm gonna call holding position um, I think this is maybe a little bit debated <laughs> I'll give you how I feel about it you know, I've seen people say that you want to, you know, if, especially if you start with tapes on your cello because you, you starting out, you don't know, you know, the location of the notes. Some people advise have, like learning to hold your hand out and hold your fingers in perfectly over the tapes at all time because that memorizes kind of the distance in your hand. I don't like that idea. Um, and I'll tell you why. I think that causes a ton of tension. It, you know, we have these kind of the bones here in the palm of the hand, okay? And what I've noticed is when I try to, when I let them kind of hinge open, it's one thing, but when I'm 
trying to play notes, and then I'm, I felt myself early on in my journey holding my hand open so that I'm constantly over all the right notes, it just created so much tension, okay? Because it's, it's just not, like I was just saying earlier, we have certain things our hands like to do. That's not one thing our hand loves to do is just kind of spread laterally all the, the bones apart with the muscles. So what I would like to recommend is that you get the sensation if you're going to think of two fingers, let's talk about one and four, for example, because they're the most distant. Instead of thinking of having, if you're playing one, then four is just hovering, fourth fingers hovering over where, you know, fourth finger should be played. I want to think more about if you're, let's say you're walking in snow or you're shifting your weight from foot to foot, you know, moving side to side. You, it's, if you transfer all the weight to one foot, it's okay if your other foot kind of loses its place, maybe it like comes along with you, that foot even le leaves the air a little bit, picks up, as long as you roll back into the same spot in the snow, okay, so you got two deep footprints in the snow, and they're, they're further apart than you can comfortably s straddle, so you have to kind of like rotate your body weight and, and from side to side, that's the feeling I want to get, I want to learn how to memorize a movement that so I have a very centered, comfortable weight in my first finger, for example, and then I'm gonna actually kind of, it doesn't have to be like a hop where I lift, but I'm really rotating onto the fourth finger. And if my first finger comes along for the ride, that's fine. Because I know that if I have to play one again, I can just reach back in a memorized feeling, that I, in a motion I've memorized, and it'll get me right back to it. I'll, one little caveat, this is less and less true the faster you play, okay? So if you start to play really fast passages, it's more likely that you're gonna kind of hover over the notes, but when you play faster and faster, you also tend to sink less and less weight. You play more like light on the fingerboard, so it's less of a problem tension-wise. So if you're just playing nice, slow, you know, juicy, melodic line with, with slow-moving notes, I say get used to kind of like really pivoting around your hand and transferring the weight to each finger and then reliably reaching back instead of trying to just hold it stiff and, and okay, now I, I know where four is, it's right there, but you know, your whole hand feels like that. If you have a small hand, do this more <laughs> because it's like, with someone with a really big, like just kind of a bear paw of a hand, you could probably get away with kind of, you know, you just have a huge hand, you have a, a really wide palm, then maybe you can get away with comfortably relaxing your hand and it just naturally covers this, this kind of span. For most of us, you know, with mortal hands, it, it's not comfortable. For people with small hands, it's really uncomfortable. So the last thing someone with small hands wants to do is to obsess about getting perfect spacing. You know, I've talked about this before too. Like if you're, if I'm playing one, four, three, I don't care where two is, okay? For example, I wouldn't keep two exactly a half distance, a half step apart. It's uncomfortable. So your, your thing is gonna be about shifting weight in like very choreographed, rehearsed ways that are reliable, but never kind of just having stiffness, but okay, it's right there, but now I'm just, totally stiff, okay? All right, and finally, the, the third issue that I see a lot is what I'll call hovering hand. By the way, these are all three issues I see a lot as a teacher, but I also battled myself, so it's, I know all about this from firsthand experience as a, an adult learner, but so hovering hand, what, it, what I see is someone, they're, they've been playing long enough that they're pretty comfortable. The feeling is, okay, I know where the notes are pretty much in this position, but I know I need to like really sink down to get a, a good contact with the string. And maybe I have a feeling like I really have to push down. So I'm gonna hold my hand up because I know if I come, if I strike the fingerboard from further away, then you know I have a little more force, it's easier to get the notes down. The problem is, again, if we look at the top of the hand, please take a look at the kind of top of my hand where the tendons are. If I close my hand, it's not too bad. Now, if I 
kind of lift my hand away like the fingers would. Do you see these lines? Those are all tendons and they're exerting themselves. Okay, so you can see how if you kind of stay poised like this, you're, first off, it's not actually poised, it's tense. And second off, you're really taxing your hand and it's, it's totally exhausting. It's also not an efficient way of generating speed. So here's the exercise to kind of work on this phenomenon. It's probably most true with this third example, but with all of these examples, what the, the way to kind of get around this and, and to improve it is really just kind of methodical practice. It can be very frustrating because especially if you're like, you're not playing super easy pieces, you, you've kind of been, you know, you're in later books and you're doing etudes that are complicated. It feels, how can I play these hard pieces and keep an eye on like the way I'm striking every single note. So what you do in the start of your practice, you do like, a, you know, the exercises I'm talking about, you kind of think about these things and you just continually to put maybe five minutes, 10 minutes a day on it. And fortunately they're comfortable. So our body is going to want to do it. So eventually it does start to seep into your plane, but it's something you kind of have to monitor and, but not obsess over because you'll, you'll go crazy if you try to like fix it. Like this week I'm fixing this problem no matter what, and I'm not gonna even play easier pieces. I'm just gonna fix it, you know. It's not a good recipe. Okay, so what I would do here, again, this is like a slower thing. What, what I think about is like someone hammering down a hammer uh, or a nail into a piece of wood. When they, I've never seen someone take the hammer and then just lift it and then just throw it down from the sky. Everyone I've ever seen is, you know, maybe they do a practice swing because they haven't swung a hammer in a while, but they're right over it and they go back down. And that back swing is part of the way to generate some power. It also makes it more reliable because you're just saying, go, I back up, like I into the air, boom, straight back down, boom, okay? There's also no tension because you start from kind of a very neutral place and then there you go. The other thing in terms of squeezing to relate it to number one, I've also never seen someone hit a nail with a hammer and then continue to like press down. The force is the blow right upon impact and then you relax. So it's the same here with the cello. Once I've lifted and dropped, I, I don't continue uh, like pushing down at all. Now the, the string is down and it takes way less effort to hold a string down. The hard part is getting the string down, but it's not hard to hold it down if it's already down. Okay, so that's, that's another incentive not to turn your, your two, your finger and your thumb into a vice. Okay, so the exercise is you just kind of, you can have it on the string. I would do it with second finger to begin with. That's the most balanced finger for pretty much everyone. Um, and, what I'm practicing is a fast motion. And what I think in my head is that the speed is what's gonna create the force to get the string down. It's not a certain amount of like strength or, or pressure. So if I can lift and drop fast, then it's down, okay? You can do it with each, you can do it with each finger and with this, at first, you don't even have to care about, is it in tune? The, the, you're, you're figuring out the finger action you need. Okay, so if you're playing a note, boom. That, that motion and not having to hover and then come down from above, but something like that makes all the difference in the world. It, it, it's much easier and there's also, you don't have your time when you're not playing is in this very relaxed, neutral place for your hand where you're not expending energy versus it's poised. And then I, in my personal like experience, anytime I had the hand up here, I was slower. Then you think by adding a backswing, it's gonna take more time. I've always, because it's coming from a relaxed place, I find my fingers are actually faster than if I hold them tight and then send them like, go, go, you know, but, you can really 
really kind of get a fast finger action if it comes back to a neutral place. All right, so there you have it. Those are my three top reasons for left hand tension and how we can kind of work around them. Uh, if you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks so much. I'll see you next week. Thank you.